Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the fourth of nine videos in the Building a Wordle App Clone series. In this video, we'll create an array of five-letter words from which to select our secret word, and also determine a way that we can verify that the word is actually a valid word. We'll create a playground so that we can filter and generate an array of words found on a public dictionary website. We'll start adding Wordle data model functions so that we can add and remove letters to our attempted word and have it update the row. Finally, we'll verify our word using the iPhone's dictionary and provide animated feedback if the word is invalid. If you like this series, please leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure that you ring the bell to get notified of all new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. As we do at the start of every video, make sure that you start a new branch. And we'll be branching from Lesson 3, and we'll call it Lesson 4. Also, make sure that that Lesson 4 is checked out as the current branch. So the first thing that we need to do is to generate a random valid five-letter word. Then, once we have it, we can start entering the word and check to see if it's a valid one. Only after we have verified that it's a valid word can we check for the correct placement of the letters. So let's work on that first part up to validating the word before we move on to the logic for checking letter placement and changing the colors of the letters. Now I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how to get a list of five-letter words, and I thought that I might just offer them up to you to use, but I think it's worthwhile showing you how I got the list in the first place. I found this website where the title is Every Word Ever. Well, that's not the case. There are far more words than are listed in this list here, but it's a great place to find common words. All I have to do is filter them out to get a list of five-letter words, and then I can use an array that I can add to my project. So I'm going to click in front of the first word and scroll all the way down to the end before they start with the definitions, and shift-click after zygotic to select all of the words and copy them to my clipboard. Now I'm going to create a playground to do the work for me, and I'll be using this playground in the next video as well, so let's create a new playground in Xcode, and I'm going to be calling it Wordle Dev. In the Resources folder, create a new file and call it words.txt and paste in those words that you copied from the website. What I like to do is to put all of these words into an array, filter them out, ignoring any words with capitals, periods, apostrophes, or dashes, and limit my array to be five-letter words only. The resulting array will be what I'll use to pick from when I present a new secret word. So first we'll create an, an empty array of string that I'm going to call common words. Next we can retrieve and parse that text file as it's in the app's bundle. So if let words is equal to bundle.main.url for the resource words with extension txt. If that's not found, we'll print file not found. Within that block, then, we can use another if let statement to break up the list into an array, and we do this by trying to get the string contents of that file, and I'm going to assign it to start words. If we can't do that, we'll print out another error that we couldn't parse the words. If we can, however, we can separate that huge string by new lines, and that's going to create an array that we'll assign to our common words. Let me just print out a count right now. And I see that there are 12,778 of them. Now we want to remove any word that contains a capital letter or which contains a single quote, a period, a dash, or a slash. So let's create a character set of all of those characters that I'll call remove set. Now 
Now there might be a more elegant way to do this, but I'm just going to run a couple of filters and make every word uppercase because all of the letters that we'll be entering into our app will be uppercase. So first, we'll filter by removing all words that contain any character within the character set. And we'll only return if it's nil. Next, we can filter out only five-letter words. Then we can map those words to a new array of those same words, all capitalized. Let me print out the count now. I see that there are now 680 of them. So let me print out the array. And once it's completed, I can copy that array of 680 words to my clipboard. I'm going to return now to our app and to our global enum file. And I'm going to create a new static constant property called common words and make it equal to what I just copied to my clipboard. So when my game starts, I can just pick a random word from this list. Before we do that, however, we're going to have to track the state of our game by creating some variables in our view model. First, we'll need a string that we can apply to our random word. So let's do that, and I'm going to call it selected word and assign it an empty string initially. But when we create a new game, we can find a random element from that array in our global constants file and assign it to that variable. But we'll have to unwrap it because it's an optional, but we know it won't fail. Next, we're going to have to build a word that we can compare our string to. So this starts out as an empty string, so we'll call it current word. And then again, when we create a new game, we'll set it back to an empty string. You recall that in the letter button view, when we tapped on a letter, it called a function called add to current word, and it passed in a letter being tapped. So let's use that letter then to add to our current word string. And we can do that with plus equals. Once we've added letters to the word, we need to update our guess object for that row with the letters in that word. So we're first going to have to know what row we're on. This will require another property, and I'll call it try index and set it to zero. So our first attempt at try index is going to be zero. Now we can create a new function called update row. Then we want to make sure that the word that we assign to our word in our row's guess word is five characters long. So we'll need to create a new word by padding our current word to a length of five with a space starting at zero. And once we have that, we can apply that to the guess array at indexes, try indexes word. So once we add to the current word, then we can call the update row function. When we tap the backspace button, we call the remove letter from current word function. And all we're going to do is remove the last letter in the word and then call the update row function once more. That will again pad it again with spaces. So current word dot remove last and then update row. We have a potential problem here though. As it stands, it's possible that the game player could be adding more than five characters to the word before entering the word, or continue deleting letters when there are no letters to delete. There is also the case, once we code it, where they may tap on enter when there are fewer than five letters. So we'll need to know when the game is in play, and when the user has started entering letters, and disable the corresponding keyboard keys if it's not appropriate to tap them. So I'll create a Boolean property called inPlay that's initialized as false, and then in the new game function, we'll set it equal to true. 
Now the game might be in play, but the person hasn't yet started entering any letters yet. If this is the case, we'll want to, in the future, be able to allow the person to enter into what's called hard mode. And this is only allowed if the user has not entered any characters yet. So let's create a computed property for this that's called game started. And this will be when the current word is not empty or if we're beyond the first row when try index is greater than zero. To disable the keyboard then, we can create another computed property that is another Boolean called disabled keyboard that is true whenever the game is not in play or the current word count is equal to five. Let's return to the keyboard view then and make sure that we disable the keys when we need to. For each of the rows, we'll disable the keyboard and reduce the opacity whenever the disabled keyboard property is true. We can use a ternary operator here to set the opacity at 0.6 when disabled and 1 otherwise. And we'll repeat that for the other two rows. For the enter button then, we want to disable it if the current word count is less than 5 or if it's in play. And then set the opacity accordingly. For the backspace key, it will be disabled if the current word count is equal to 0 or it's not in play. And again, we'll set the opacity corresponding to that same state. Now when we tap on the word, we'll need to check to see if it is indeed a valid word. And if it is, we'll be able to go forward with checking the letters, which we will do in the next video. We're fortunate that we can use the built-in dictionary on our device or simulator to check to see if the word exists. So I'm going to create a new function called verifyWord. And what you can do is return a UI reference library view controller dot dictionary has definition for term function. And then we can pass in the current word, and if it finds it, it will return true. Otherwise, it'll return false. It's that simple. Then within the enter word function, then let's do a check on that word and see if it exists. So if it's true, we'll print valid word. If it's not, we'll print invalid. So let's test this. If we run the app now, notice that the enter key is not enabled and neither is the backspace key. Let's enter a valid word like mound. And as we start entering, the backspace key becomes active, but the enter key is not enabled until we get five letters entered. And at which state the other keys get disabled. So we can either enter or delete. If I tap on the enter button, I get some stuff on the console that I can ignore, but at the end it says invalid. But I know mound is a valid word. Well, it turns out that on a simulator, by default, the dictionary has not yet been set. So return to the home screen and go to the settings app. Tap on general and from there dictionary. Choose a dictionary and wait until it loads. If we run the app again, and this time enter mound once more, this time it's found and it's valid. Let's run once more and enter an invalid word. When we tap on enter, we see that it is indeed not recognized and invalid is printed. 
Now, I want to provide some feedback to the user, and I'm going to do two things. I want to shake the row and present a brief alert display. Now, I'll leave the alert display until the next video, but I want to finish this video by adding an animation to this row if the word is invalid. So to shake the row, I'm going to use a technique that I learned on the Objective-C blog site. They use this to show when a password field is not entered correctly. Well, we can use this same technique for our row. It's this shake geometry effect that I'm going to copy and use in my code. All I have to do is create a state property for that row that will be an integer set to zero and then attach a modifier with this geometry effect passing in that state. Then whenever we try to enter an incorrect row, I can add one to the value with animation. So first, let's copy that struct. And I'm going to return to my project. I'm going to create a new group that I'll call animations. Inside that group, I'm going to create a new Swift file that I'll call shake. I'll need to import Swift UI and paste that code into the file. If I return to our data model, I want to create a published array of integers that I'm going to call incorrect attempts with six integers, all zero, representing the attempt for each row, the initial attempt. In our game view, I want to attach a modifier of the shake geometry effect to each of the six rows, passing in the corresponding incorrect attempts integer. But wait a minute, why am I repeating myself? This is ideal for a for each loop. I should have done this at the very start. So let me comment out these last five rows for now. And I'm going to create a for each loop from 0 through 5 using self as the ID to get the rows index. And then I can move that view and the modifier inside that loop and change 0 to index so that it will loop through and create five views, each with that modifier. That's way better. Now I can delete that commented code out. Not sure why I didn't do that in the beginning. So back in our data model now, when the attempt is invalid, we will, with animation, increment the incorrect attempt at the try index, and then immediately set it back to zero for the next attempt. Let me test this now on the simulator. When I enter a bad word, the row shakes. Let me backspace now and enter a valid word. This time, when I tap Enter, I get a valid word notification. Well, that's it for this video. So make sure you commit to your repository. Great. We're getting there. In the next video, then, we'll figure out how to determine which of the letters match our selected word and flip our letters over using a different background color and, at the same time, change the colors of our keys. Then we'll increment our try index and keep going for five more attempts or until we guess the word. If we fail or are successful, We'll want to provide some feedback, so we'll look into that too.